Good morning, I'm Dr. Patrick O'Gara from Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston and Harvard Medical School. I am here at ACC 2018. I have just participated as a panelist in the first late-breaking clinical trial session during which the results of the Odyssey trial were presented by Dr. Gabriel Steg from France. This is a very large study that examines the hypothesis that the use of a PCSK9 inhibitor, in this case aliracumab, would be associated with an improvement or a reduction in major adverse cardiac events in a large group of patients, approximately 19,000, following hospitalization with an acute coronary syndrome. And the top line results of the trial are very significant and concordant with those that were reported last year in the Fourier trial. And in this particular trial of Odyssey, there was a 15% relative risk reduction in a composite endpoint of coronary heart disease death, myocardial infarction stroke, or unstable angina. The investigators were very careful to analyze various subgroups of patients within the total 19,000 that they studied and interestingly demonstrated that the effect of PCSK9 inhibitor use was relatively greatest in patients who had an LDL cholesterol of greater than 100 milligram per deciliter. Now this is somewhat at odds with the Fourier trial by virtue of the fact that in the Fourier trial uh, the investigators were able to show risk reduction across the entire spectrum of patients with LDL cholesterols, even uh, patients who had an LDL cholesterol of less than 80 milligram per deciliter. But here in Odyssey, we see what appears to be a differential effect uh, based on baseline levels of LDL cholesterol. I'm sure that we will learn more as uh, further analyses are completed on this particular uh, subset. There are some major differences between Fourier and Odyssey. Fourier was a trial that randomized uh, patients with a variety of types of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, including patients who had had a prior myocardial infarction, a prior ischemic stroke, or peripheral arterial disease, plus a number of other attributes that place them at high risk for coronary heart disease events. Whereas here in Odyssey, patients who were randomized included those only who had had an acute coronary syndrome within the past 12 months. And there were differences obviously in the particular identity of the PCSK9 agent chosen. And in Fourier, uh, there was a reduction in levels of LDL cholesterol from approximately 90 to 30 milligram per deciliter that were achieved very quickly after initiation of the drug and were sustained throughout the entire duration of the uh, trial. Whereas here in Odyssey, there was a comparable reduction in LDL cholesterol from approximately 90 uh, down to uh, levels of uh, approximately uh, 30 or so. Uh, but there was a drift upwards in the LDL cholesterol concentration over the uh, period of follow-up in the Odyssey trial. There are several reasons for this uh, that uh, were addressed by uh, the principal investigator, Dr. Steg at the time of his uh, presentation. I should point out as well that uh, one of the major differences between the two trials is that in Fourier, the patients were followed up for approximately two years, whereas here in the Odyssey trial, there's a longer uh, period of follow-up, namely three years. It's important to recognize, however, that these trial results are directionally concordant and both contribute significantly to the field and in particular establish that very aggressive LDL lowering above and beyond what can be achieved with moderate or high intensity statin therapy in patients at risk is associated with an improvement in a composite endpoint of cardiovascular or coronary heart disease death, myocardial infarction, and stroke uh, with or without an additional component of unstable angina or the need for urgent revascularization. I think that the results of the Odyssey trial continue to push the field forward and uh, in many ways uh, continue to challenge us with respect to uh, the 
um, paradigms that we have become accustomed to using <clears throat> with respect to the provision of uh, statin therapy in high-risk subsets. There is no question but that we should treat to risk, but the results of both Odyssey as well as Fourier raise the issue as to whether in patients at risk we should treat to target. And I think it is very exciting that we have information now on several thousands of patients that have been randomized in outcome trials of PCSK9 inhibitors. What does this mean in practice for those of us who take care of patients, either as a general cardiologist or a lipidologist or a prevention expert? I think that this would raise the platform uh, for the use of these agents in appropriate individuals who are at high risk and who are not able to get to target with high intensity statin therapy or maximally tolerated statin therapy. So there will be clearly defined medical indications for the use of these drugs. However, we will still then battle uh, the reality of how expensive they are to administer and the difficulty that many of our patients have in terms of accessing these medications through their pharmacy benefit plans and their payer coverage. More will have to be done in that particular arena, particularly, I believe, with respect to reducing the cost of these agents. It will be interesting to see over years ahead whether there are other types of medications that can be used to inhibit the activity of the PCSK9 protein uh, so as to uh, render these monoclonal antibodies uh, somewhat obsolete in a very short period of time. There's a lot of interesting science in that particular regard and we do need to pay attention to it closely.